Good morning, sixth grade. This video is for Thursday, April 30th. Um, I'm going to go over our PowerPoint about wins. Um, I'm not going to show you guys your, um, your schedule for today because it's the same thing as yesterday. Watch my video and finish your virtual lab. If you finish the virtual lab already, then you have no actual work to do today unless you have makeup work to do from earlier in this week or later uh, the previous weeks. So, um, and then on Zoom, for those of you who are, stayed on Zoom with me yesterday, um, we worked on the virtual lab. If you didn't finish the virtual lab, I'm gonna quickly go over the conclusion at the beginning of the Zoom meeting. Um, and actually, I'm probably going to post, um, I'm going to post a Crash Course Kids video for you guys to watch today um, as like a review from two weeks ago, I think. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for my PowerPoint that I found somewhere and it looked awesome because it's exactly what I'm teaching you. Okay, so this PowerPoint has like... 20 something slides. I'm not going over all 20 of them because it is not all covered in what you guys are actually learning. So this is going to go over the wins. Okay, so what does wind do for us? Bad hair days, a lost balloon, a cool breeze on a warm summer's day. In this lesson, you're going to find out just, oh, that's supposed to say how, how important this invisible force is. What is wind? Air can move easily from place to place, and this is often caused by a change in pressure. The movement of an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure is called wind. The difference in pressure is from an unequal heating of Earth's atmosphere. Warmer air becomes less dense and more pressurized, while cooler air has less pressure. The warmer air will move toward the area of cooler air, resulting in winds. Measuring winds. In the wind reports, wow, in the weather reports, winds are often described by their speed and what direction they are going. Wind is shown by a weather vane. The weather vane turns in the direction that the wind is blowing by catching the breeze. Wind is measured using an anemometer. An anemometer typically has, well, an anemometer has typically four cups mounted on spokes that are hooked to a wheel that spins. The, the faster the wheel spins, the faster the wind is going. So this is what an anemometer looks like. Um, this is kind of like, um, this is kind of like a breakdown of like the inside of it. And all of the cups, if you look, are all facing the same way, the way that they're open because if it wasn't, it wouldn't actually work. So I'm actually gonna go over more of what an anemometer does and how to actually make one at home uh, tomorrow. And I'm kind of excited about it because I got cups and my cups are cool. Um, but you'll see that in Friday's video. Okay, so um, I'm gonna skip this slide because we didn't talk about wind chill factor. but. This is what, like, when it's really windy, that's what it um, makes it super cold on, like, a winter day. Okay, so local winds. Local winds are winds that blow over short distances. The breeze that you feel when you walk outside is a local wind. Local winds only form when the large-scale winds are too weak. The two main forms of local winds are sea breezes and land breezes. A sea breeze forms along the side of a large body of water. 
It takes much more heat to warm up water than it does dry land, but it also takes more time to cool water. The air above, the la above land becomes warmer, faster, and rushes out to the sea where the lower pressure is. At night, a reverse process happens because the land will cool faster. The warm air from the sea will come inland. Okay, so this is basically showing you how this works. It's showing you that it's re one way during the day and reverse at night. So during the day, we have a sea breeze. So the sun heats the land and faster than it heats the water and the heat goes up and then it flows around and it returns to the cool uh, water and then we get a sea breeze. The sea breeze is also could be, it could be from the ocean, but if it's from the lake, it's called a lake breeze. So then at night, you have a land breeze, so it's cooler at night on the land, and that breeze is going out towards the water, and then the heat is going up from the uh, from the water into the sky, and it's flowing that way. So it's the reverse reaction. A land breeze. The reverse process of a sea breeze, as you saw in the previous slide, is called a land breeze. At night, when temperatures cool, the air stays warm and the ocean rushes to the shore. This causes the land breeze effect. Global winds. This might be the last slide I show you, but I don't remember. Global winds. Global winds blow from specific directions over long distances. These winds occur over, very large, over a very large area. The sun strikes the earth unevenly with most of the energy focused at the equator. The poles are less, receive less sunlight, so they are much colder than the equator. Oh, no, there's a couple more slides, I think. So this is showing you how it's, um, sh um, the sun's rays are going. So A, it's showing you that there's a longer distance over a larger area, and B is showing a shorter distance at a smaller area. So it gets a direct hit to the equator because of the way the earth is shaped and the way it's tilted. But it's getting an indirect hit to the, the poles. Mm. This one I'm not going over. Coriolis effect, I needed to go over this one. Okay, the Coriolis effect. The winds do not flow straight from the poles to the equator because of Earth's rotation. This means that the winds curve as they try to flow towards the equator. This is known as the Coriolis effect. Winds in the northern hemisphere gradually turn towards the right and winds toward the southern hemisphere gradually turn towards the left. Um, this is actually making me think of your virtual lab. So if you guys didn't finish it or didn't um, get it done, the Coriolis effect may actually be something that we're gonna include in your conclusion tomorrow when I go over that because, um, and I'm gonna, um, Maui is in Hawaii and that's where your virtual lab is based in, in Maui. And, um, but Maui is actually part of the Northern Hemisphere. So we're gonna go with the Coriolis effect to gauge those winds, even though if you were on uh, Zoom with me yesterday, I think I told you guys Northeast, so I'm going to check to make sure that that makes sense. And we'll come up with, the. Um, I think the last part of the conclusion was the part that I was a little confused about, so we'll come up with a, a good answer for it. Okay, so this is showing the Coriolis effect. Global wind belt. The Coriolis effect and other factors combine to produce different areas. The calm areas are known as the horse latitudes and the doldrums. The other areas are known as belts and include trade winds, polar, easterlies, and prevailing easterlies, westerlies. 
So that's actually more for, I want to say that's more for like oceanography and um, actually we might be talking about some of these things next week. Um, and it's more for weather. I I'm not actually sure if these were words that we were going to go over in your book, but I'm going to can skip the next couple of slides to get down to, nope, not trade winds. I think this is part of, trade winds is actually something for next week. So I may go over this PowerPoint again next week. Um, the jet stream is what I wanted to get to. Okay. So approximately 15 miles above Earth's surface, large bands of high wind speeds form. These are known as jet streams. The winds can be between 150 and 300 miles per hour. So yesterday, or not yesterday, Tuesday in Tuesday's video, I think I said that it was 200 to 400 kilometers. So this is telling it to you in miles. So it's just a variation of, of converting it from miles to kilometers. Airplanes can use these highways in the sky to get to their destinations faster. So if the wind is pushing behind the plane, that's called a tailwind, and that's gonna get the plane to its destination faster. If the wind is pushing to the front of the plane, it's called um, headwind, it's hitting the nose of the plane, and it's gonna slow the plane down because the plane is going against the wind. And this is showing the jet streams. And we're gonna skip these review questions. And that's it. Okay, so I did skip a lot of this. Oh, wow, no, this was like 31 slides. But there were a lot of cool pictures in it. So um, I'm going to go over this again possibly next week. But we're done with this PowerPoint for today. And um, make sure you guys get your virtual lab done. If you need help with it, I'm going to uh, go over it during Zoom. Yesterday we did everything except for the conclusion. So today we're gonna work on the conclusion part of it. Okay guys, I'll see you on Zoom, bye.